Hello and welcome to Capital Online TV News. I'm Angela Wamboy and these are the stories making headlines. Education Cabinet Secretary Jacob Kaimeni has survived a vote of no confidence motion. This is after MPs failed to meet the threshold needed to set up a select committee to probe allegations of misconduct and gross violation of the Constitution. House Speaker Justin Materi announced that the motion had failed after only 89 MPs of the 140 present in the chamber voted in support while the Constitution requires it to be supported by 117 MPs. The debate took political undertones from the onset as Majority Leader Aidan Duale and other MPs opposed the motion because the particulars it raised did not meet the threshold for the removal of a CS. The opposition urged their colleague to back the motion by Matayos MPs Joffrey Odanga where he claims Kaimenyi is running down the Ministry of Education by not listening to other stakeholders when developing policies and is not ready to work with others. The National Cohesion and Integration Commission wants MP Moses Kuri attained after fresh hate speech. NCIC has written to the Inspector General Police Joseph Boynet to arrest and prosecute Kuria over incitement remarks he made recently. NCIC Chairman Francis Ole Caparo has also written to the Director of Public Prosecutions Kariako Tobiko urging him to seek the cancellation of bail terms issued to Kuria in a similar case pending in court. This follows pressure from a section of leaders and Kenyans on social media who want action taken against Kuria who was captured on video urging youth in his constituency to kill anyone opposed to the NYS project, statements Kuria says were misconstrued. Kuria, who has previously refused to apologize over inflammatory statements he has made, said he did not regret making the statements but regretted the fact that they were misinterpreted. The embattled MP also apologized to President Uhuru Kenyatta, whose name has been dragged into the fiasco. I addressed a gathering in my constituency on the 26th of June, 12 days ago. It was two or three days after whatever happened in Kibera, whereby youths hired by a well-known opposition leader burnt down toilets burned down hospitals, built under the NYS program. That particular point, I was very angry, and I was also very worried that whatever happened in Kibera could permeate to my constituency. The Supreme Court has thrown out a case lodged by Ladema Olekina following an unsuccessful challenge of the election of Nara Governor Samuel Oletunai. Olekina had moved to the Supreme Court after losing previous cases in the High Court and Supreme Court, but when he did so, he withdrew his appeal on merit and instead challenged previous rulings that he meets cost of the suits. The Supreme Court has, however, ruled that it has no jurisdiction to determine his challenge to cost, saying that under the law, costs follow an event. The judges have ruled that since he dropped his initial challenge to tonight's election and only wanted the orders on costs determined by the Supreme Court, meant that his application had failed. The Supreme Court ruled that for the avoidance of doubt, the orders of the High Court and Court of Appeal upholding tonight's election stood and that Olekina would also meet the cost of the suit before the highest court in the land. And now taking a look across the borders, South Sudan rebel leader Riek Machar is now threatening to mobilize the ouster of President Salva Kiir if he fails to quit office by Wednesday at midnight. Machar has told a news conference in Nairobi that Kiir's term expires tonight and he wants him to resign honorably to pave way for elections. He is accusing Kiir's administration of trying to amend the constitution to extend their term in office illegally. He says if Kira does not quit office, the people of South Sudan have every right to rise up and overthrow his regime. He issued the threats on the eve of the country's fourth anniversary after gaining independence from the north that is ruled by Omar al-Bashir. The SPLM would therefore like to categorically declare the government of self akir the national legislature, the state governments, the state legislative assemblies as unconstitutional and illegitimate as of midnight of July 8, 2015. The SPLM appeals to President Salva Kiir to resign from office, dissolve his entire government, 
It is now an established rule internationally and regionally that any group of people who assume state power unconstitutionally should not be recognized. And now taking a look at the world of business, the Communications Authority of Kenya says it's not out to fight the dominant players in the telecommunications sector. CA Director General Francis Wangusi says the new regulations will ensure there is fair play in the market. Wangusi says fair competition and equality of treatment regulations 2015, which are still in draft form, will see any company with over 50% of market share like Safaricom declared dominant, hence subjected to specific regulations that would favor the smaller players. Speaking to Capital FM Business, Wangusi however maintains that there will be enough consultations to see to it that the final decision is reached and the regulations are in place. And finally, taking a look at the world of sports, Gormahia has threatened to pull out of this year's Sekafa Kagame Cup Club Championship. The club announced they cannot secure air tickets to Tanzania. This is after Football Kenya Federation informed the domestic champions that they could not afford to pay for their tickets to the annual tournament. Gormahia chairman Ambrose Rachier told Capital Sport they may have no choice but to pull out of the regional tourney, which runs from the 18th of July through to the 2nd of August. And that's a wrap-up of the day's top stories. I've been your host, Angela Wamboy. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.capitalfm.co.ke forward slash TV. And make sure that you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Capital FM Kenya.